Hello, Foam River Crusaders, and welcome to our latest episode. My name is Sean Wasserkrug, and today we're going to be reviewing another review roundup where I will be reviewing three films that are currently on streaming services right now. Uh, the first one is Luck on Apple, uh, followed by Not Okay on Hulu, and They, Them on Peacock. Uh, all three of these movies have come out either today or uh, in the past week, um, and these are movies that I for the most part, have seen the trailers for and was more, not necessarily excited to see them, but wanted to check them out, mainly because of the the uh, actors and actresses coinciding with the films themselves. Uh, for the instance with Luck, um, Luck itself, the premise is relatively simple. Uh, it, it follows a girl who has lived her entire life with incredibly bad luck, but one day finds a lucky coin and her life drastically changes. But when she loses the coin, she follows a black cat into the world of where good luck and bad luck uh, basically are created and, and live. Um, and that's basically the, bit, the general story of luck. Uh, the main um, cast in this movie that you're going to really recognize is you got Simon Pegg who plays Bob the Black Cat. Uh, Jane Fonda plays the dragon. Whoopi Goldberg plays the captain. Uh, Lil Rel Howery plays uh, Marv, um, and but the lead is is a relatively newcomer, uh, Eva Noblezada, who plays Sam. Um, and for the most part, performance-wise, I think I think Sam actually did a real, real or uh, Eva did a relatively solid job as Sam. And animation-wise, I mean, this is not going to go up against Disney or. Uh, even Pixar, in terms of looking that kind of way, uh, it definitely, there are times where the animation looks really good, and there are times where the animation doesn't quite match up to par, kind of a lot like Netflix's Sea Beast uh, earlier this year, where certain situations looked really good, and then other situations not so great. And Lux kind of teetering that line. It doesn't ever look cheap, mind you. Uh, it, it never am I watching the movie going, oh god, this looks horrible. But there are moments, especially with a certain facial reactions with the Sam character where it just doesn't match what the character is actually doing or feeling at the moment. But those are real nitpicks in terms of actual animation. You're not really going to a movie and you're not going to break down animation all the way down unless it's something like a Pixar or a Disney. Um, but this is uh, produced by John Lasseter. Uh, many people know John Lasseter as the guy who basically helped birth Pixar uh, to what it is today, but he's no longer with Pixar because of certain situations. Um, but the one thing I noticed, or one thing I felt while watching Luck, is that it reminded me of old school Pixar. And what I mean by old school Pixar is it's a very simplistic story. And what I mean by that is it's not trying to go super deep into the life of a thought or the life of an emotion or or the life of a soul, or anything like that, like we've seen with past films of Pixar, which, if anyone knows, the last few Pixar films have not really been my cup of tea, hence why we shot the video, The Fall of Pixar, here on the channel about a, two months back. Um, but what made Pixar great was taking a story with a solid lead, and bringing a unique character into the mix, such as Bob the Cat, in this case, and introducing us to a world that honestly is something that we would honestly think of as kids. You know, I mean, the greatness of Pixar back in the day was, what if your toys could talk? What if your cars could talk? What if, what if bugs had their own little world? And that's kind of what this is doing is, you remember all those imaginary characters from when you were kids, like leprechauns, unicorns, dragons, and all that kind of stuff. What if they all lived in a special world? made of good luck and bad luck and they created it what would that world be like how would that world function how would that world live how is bad luck and good luck created and the movie luck actually does a relatively good job of explaining those things and actually doing it in a way that's plausible and makes sense to the point when i was watching the movie and they're explaining the world to sam i a lot of times went that was actually really good that's actually really clever i actually really like the way they thought of that and it's a nice, unique world that I think anyone of all ages, whether you're a kid or whether you're an adult, can really get behind. In terms of the characters, like I said, outside of Sam and Bob, there's not really... Oh, and uh, Jerry, played by Colin O. Uh, Donahue. Many people know him as Captain Hook from Once Upon a Time. The characters themselves are all just supporting roles to elevate Sam and Bob through you know multiple tasks through the film, but 
they're all relatively decent characters. You're you're not going to be rolling your eyes at super kitty things in this. It does stay relatively um, mature, not going in terms of jokes, but it doesn't ever try to talk down to kids or anything like that. It keeps everything at a relatively mature state that both kids and adults can watch and for the most part enjoy. And Luck was definitely one of those films that I was actually surprised at how much I actually enjoyed. Now, granted, it's not going to be one of the best films of the year. It's not even going to be one of the best animated films of the year. But for what it was, which was an animated release that was thrown on Apple that frankly has not gotten a lot of marketing behind it, I think Luck was actually a surprisingly decent film that I would recommend if anyone was looking for an animated film and they had Apple. Um, so yeah, for me, I think Luck is definitely a worth checking out. It's not going to like change your life or anything, but if you're just looking for a simple, pleasant film starring Simon Pegg, who we all love, uh, then Luck is definitely one worth checking out. I don't think you guys would be disappointed with it once, uh, uh, once you started watching the film overall. Uh, I'm going to give uh, Luck a 71%. Um, moving on to our next film, the next that is Not Okay on Hulu. Uh, this came out... I believe last week, or, or it could have been the week prior to that. Uh, we are very big fans of Zoe Deutsch here on the Movie Crusaders. Brian and I adore her uh, and everything she's in. And we do also really kind of love her when she takes these characters. Um, Brian would attest to the movie Buffaloed, where she plays a character that's not really likable or, or a character that you would not normally root for. But she finds ways, because of her charisma and quirkiness, to get you to kind of feel uh, positively towards that character one way or another. And that's basically what she's trying to do here in Not Okay. Uh, Not Okay basically follows the story of Danny, uh, an ambitious, uh, ambitious young woman who's wanting to, you know, make friends, find a man, find a boy, man, however you want to say it, uh, and and. You know, and kind of progress through her career, but she really fails at all those facets. Uh, when she basically decides that she's going to try to make herself look more popular or look more established, she basically um, says she's going to go on a trip to Paris for the week, and thus kind of you know takes pictures and hides in her apartment and photoshops herself in Paris. Problem is, is at that exact same time while she's doing that, a terrorist attack happens in Paris where she has taken pictures at. So she is now dubbed a Paris terrorist bombing survivor. So when she comes back home, she has now become internet celebrity, you know, social influencer, all this kind of stuff. Everything she's ever wanted has come uh, full focus all because of this lie. And it's, you know, she's becoming friends with people who also are survivors. And she's having to kind of keep up this persona while also trying to change herself and make herself a better person, even though she's living a lie. Um, and like I said, in terms of the character, I mean, she's not necessarily a likable character, at least definitely not in the beginning, but Zoe has this, like I said, this quirky charisma that she could be, <laughs> she could be drowning kittens, and you probably would be like, well, it, but it's Zoe, though, and it's like, I know that's a horrible thing to say, but she has this, she has this thing that just, no matter what she does, you're going to embrace Zoe as a character. I would actually love to see her do something like where she's a serial killer, uh, and see if she really can kind of turn the tide even on that, um, much like how Charlize Theron did with, with Monster. Um, but the story itself, these kind of stories are not necessarily my cup of tea. I, I personally cannot stand stories or movies about social influencing or trying to get clicks or trying to do certain things and becoming super famous and popular off of basically doing nothing and yes i know the i the i you know ironicness of this i'm shooting a video for youtube for views and people to follow me and stuff like that but it's one thing that i noticed halfway through this film is that and i know i know it's not the same thing so don't all jump on my butt for saying this but it's very kind of dear evan hansen without the musical aspect where with dear evan hansen he fell into uh, a situation and then instead of coming out and telling the truth, he basically wrote it all the way through popularity and falling in love and all this until it all came crashing down. And that's basically what the Danny character is doing here. She didn't go out of her way to try to make herself a survivor. Uh, she just wanted to kind of look like she went to Paris and was doing something very you know fun and stylish. And then this all fell into her lap and everyone started you know praising her and calling her a survivor and a hero and stuff like that. 
and she just kind of wrote it all the way through. So, like Dear Evan Hansen, she does do all these kind of things. She becomes popular. She befriends a character, uh, Rowan, played by Mia Isaac, who honestly, to me, is the standout of this film. Uh, this young actress uh, is fantastic through this movie. And if there was one thing I would definitely say, hey, check this movie out, other than you know Zoe, is check out Mia Isaac's performance as Rowan. Um, she's a school shooting survivor in the story and her powerful rawness to the character throughout the film was definitely something that made me uh be glued to the screen whenever i was watching this you know watching it at home on hulu you tend to get distracted with your phones and you know stuff like that but whenever rowan was on screen especially with zoe uh or danny um it was very hard for me to take my eyes off of it because of her raw emotions of, of this character of rowan I uh, can't wait to see what Mia does next. I was really, really uh, impressed with her performance overall. Um, also, Dylan O'Brien. That's another actor that uh, Brian and I really love on the movie Crusaders. He's in it as Colin, uh, who's basically kind of like a weed social influencer. He's in it, but not enough for me to really warrant saying anything about his character. Like, he's there. Uh, do I wish Dylan O'Brien had a bigger role? Sure. But based off the character he was playing, he was in it enough. Um, but nonetheless, Zoe Deutsch uh, puts on a solid performance as Danny of going through this character that really also just is very kind of selfish about her her uh, you know personal goals and doesn't kind of understand other people's um, situations and other people's struggles and th until she basically kind of gets forced into it uh, and, and kind of seeing things from the other side of the perspective and then when she does finally start to change and try to become a better person everything starts crumbling down around her uh, and that's the one thing that kind of definitely falls apart from the story is that unlike you know other films this is obviously not a true story so we don't really know if at the end of the day will danny ever become a better person will we see a redemption arc and probably not because of what the character is and and all that kind of stuff and so not having that kind of ending for the danny character does make the film feel a little incomplete. I mean, even Dear Evan Hansen kind of had that situation where uh, they basically was like, well, that's the end of the movie. That's the end of, or in this case, the play. Who knows what's going to happen, but eh, that's the end of our story. And that's the same thing that kind of happens with Danny here. Um, the rest of the performances in the film, I wasn't necessarily crazy about any of them. They're all, I guess, solid. They do their parts in the film, but nothing that's uh, up to the standards of what Zoe and Amia Isaac do in this film. Um, in terms of you know an overall score, I'm gonna give Not Okay a 69%. I think when it really starts to kind of dive into the situations of the film, I think it does a really good job. Even though the whole social influencing and stuff like that is not my cup of tea, and it's not something I enjoy watching, uh, because when they do go into certain situations and they start bringing in people who are not trained actors <laughs> and they're and they're kind of like doing the whole like uh people who are responding thing uh which they did that with dear evan hansen they did that with uh miss marvel earlier this year um that's when we really really starts to kind of turn a, a tide negatively for me and they do this in the beginning of the film um and then they bring it back up again in the middle of the film or near the end of the film and those are the kind of things where you just kind of f wish you could fast forward through but Zoe and Mia put on a very solid performance. So if you want to see two solid performances from them, uh, feel free to check that out. That's on Hulu right now. Uh, going to our last film, this is a movie that came out today. It's a horror film on Peacock called They Them. Um, they Them, this is not a movie that particularly was something that was standing out to me that was going to be good. Um, basically, it's... Uh, uh, basically have the um i'm trying to make sure i say all the acronym or the, all the uh syllables correct lgbtqia plus uh characters basically going to a conversion camp um and it kind of turns into almost like a friday the 13th situation now normally is that a movie that would really go oh cool i can't wait to watch that no not necessarily but the cast is what made me kind of want to check this out. Uh, the the lead the lead counselor or the person that runs the camp is Kevin Bacon, um, which naturally that was the selling point for me right there. Uh, there are other people in the cast like Anna Klumski, uh, many people know from you know uh, I think it was a uh, Veep and of course My Girl when she was younger. Uh, Carrie Pris uh, Preston, many people know from True Blood and I think Claws is the show. I know her from True Blood um, and Austin Crute. 
Uh, many people might know Austin Crute from Booksmart. Uh, he was probably one of the main uh, young actors that I um, really was like, oh, I remember that guy. I actually enjoyed him in that movie. Um, and with this film, I mean, with Kevin Bacon at the helm, I was like, this could be something that on paper doesn't look like it's going to work or doesn't look like it's going to be that entertaining, but could maybe turn out to be a very solid horror film nonetheless. And sadly, it does not do that. <laughs> um, I, I, I was trying to give this movie the benefit of the doubt, and it's not, and I will say this, a lot of people are thinking, oh, it's a woke horror movie, and I don't really think it's much of a woke film by any means necessary. It's more, you know, proud, like gay pride and, and uh, the, you know, LGBTQA plus, or QA, QIA plus uh, community proud. It's not trying to go like, you don't get us kind of thing. It's not, it's not trying to do that. It's not trying to say like, you know, you know, queer people good, straight people bad, at least in this situation, I mean, based off the people that are in the story, yes, but that's not the story that they're trying to tell. It's about these, these group of kids um, who go, get thrown into this conversion camp and basically stuff happens. The, what fails ultimately about the film is that it doesn't really, it wants to be a slasher film, it wants to be kind of like a Friday the 13th for, you know, the queer community, but it doesn't, it doesn't excel at that. It doesn't do it, and it doesn't hit the marks that it needs to hit in order for this to be something of semblance or, or, or really matter in terms of something that you should really go out of your way to see. Kevin Bacon is going through the motions. I'm not saying that in a good way or a bad way. Kevin Bacon's there. He's got some moments in the film, but ultimately his performance could have been done by many other people. Same thing goes with most of, of the, the rest of the main cast. Uh, Theo Germain plays Jordan, um, the, the actual they-them in the film. And while uh, Theo does a solid job in the film, there's also a lot of parts in the film that Theo is really given more of a stone face performance and really probably could have shown a little more emotion or reacted in a way that kind of showed more than just a stone face is your reaction. Now, sometimes in that film, it does work. Um, and Theo's performance is, is solid for the most part, but there's just certain situations where I'm like, oh my God, show some emotion other than just a stone face look. Anna Klumski, I think is decent in the film for what it is. The rest of the cast itself, Austin Crute, uh, basically kind of turns everything up into an 11. He is the comedic tone of the film. Uh, but once again, they don't do enough in the movie to really kind of build these characters. It takes about a good hour before we actually get some kills in the movie. But even then, the kills are so rushed and they're so kind of like tacked on that it just feels like, oh yeah, we forgot we're doing a slasher film. Let's throw slasher stuff in here. It, the film really loses its way about halfway through the film and then at the end it's basically trying to to catch up and do everything before the time of the movie runs out there's a lot of cast in here that don't get killed so it's kind of like what's the point of having all this cast if you're not going to kill them uh the killer uh you can figure out the killer pretty much within the first you know 15 once you once you know all the characters in the film it's pretty easy to pick out who the killer is uh, what what their what their motives are? No, you're probably not gonna figure that out. But who the killer is, I pretty much knew right from the get go. So when the the big reveal happens, you're just like, well, yeah, duh. I, I kind of figured that. Um, all the uh, teenage actors, they're all playing kind of the cliche roles. You've got the you've got the kind of the emo ish punk uh, character. You've you've got the overly flamboyant one. You've got the athletic one who's kind of like the jock. You've You've got the, you know, not necessarily the religious one, but the one from a religious family. They all hit their product norms in terms of what these situations are, but none of them really elevate them to anything more than what the sum of its parts are, which are generic character A, B, C, D. They have funny little moments here or there, and they try to build these characters up, but then there's times where you go 20-some minutes without seeing those characters again, and you lose any, any uh, momentum you have with the characters overall and then it just rushes to the end of the film and they're not even an important part of the ending of the film and then you have this big uh like proud i am who i am i'm strong uh moment at the end that just doesn't really feel 
earned or deserved, and it also is super cliche. And ultimately, they them tries to set out to do something similar but different based off of the situation, but ultimately fails in trying to do anything to be memorable other than another failed Kevin Bacon horror film in the last couple of years. Uh, so for me, this is definitely not a movie I would recommend. I would say if you want to watch something that's like a summer camp slasher film, go watch the Friday the 13th. They're probably a lot more enjoyable than They Them. I'm going to give They Them a 35%. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed these reviews. If you guys did, go ahead and hit that like, share, subscribe on the channel so you guys stay up to date with all the latest videos that pop up on the Movie Crusaders. And of course, don't forget to follow us on all those social media outlets you see below. Uh, coming up next, we'll be having reviews for uh, Hulu's Prey and Bullet Train. Um, in terms of the Movie Crusaders shows, we're probably going to be taking the month off kind of to reset our batteries, refigure out what we want to do with the shows, um, whether or not we're going to come back just as strong or maybe do just little shows here and there and not every week. Uh, we're still trying to figure out what we want to do with that. But if there is a movie that's coming out that you guys want to see reviewed, let me know. I will watch it and review it for you. Um, but yeah, until next time, in case I don't see you, good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Movie Crusaders. You're still here. It's over. Go home.